We would not be having it. Then we'll both take your test two grade and multiply it times 10% and so on for each of the tests because each grade test is 10%. We'll add all those together. Then we'll take your homework average, multiply it by I believe it's 0.35 because they're worth 35%. And then we'll take your quiz average and multiply that by 0 0.05 because it's worth 5%. Add it all together and we have your expected value in this course, which is your grade. That's exactly what we're going to be doing with all of our problems and expected value. Each thing, category of things, has a value and a probability. So test one had a probability of point one, which was your value, you know, your probability to go with your test one, and so on and so forth. And you take the value times the probability, the value times the probability, and then you add those all up. That's what we're going to be calculating. And essentially, it's just a weighted average. Now, that's what this says. That's how we're gonna, what we're calculating. Now, there's this weird pair of words called decision theory that shows up in this section. This sounds like a really fancy thing, doesn't it? Decision theory. It's not. It is, okay, look, let's look at our expected values or our weighted averages and determine which one is more to make our decision. Doesn't that make sense? So we want to figure out what's, what is our expected value of, you know, running by, uh, let's think of a good one. Well, let's say what's our expected value of getting an A on this test, and we'll go through and do some calculations, da 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 da. Or our expected value of getting something else on this test, da da da. Which one would you rather do? Well, you'd rather do the one that gets more for you in your overall grade, yes? Yeah. So, you make decisions based on better expected values. Now, one thing that's a little different than grades is that a lot of the problems we're going to do have to do with either making money or not making money, or paying money, you know, costing you or not costing you. Making money is positive. Paying for something is considered a negative value. You no longer have that money. So for instance, if you're buying a lottery ticket, I know you don't do this, you pay a dollar, so the, the value of your lottery ticket is minus a dollar. If you happen to win, it's the million dollar jackpot, then the value of what you win is a million dollars, positive. But when you multiply those times the probability of winning and the probability of not winning, you find out that your expected value turns out to be negative like 97 cents. Because you're never expected to win very much in the long run when you play a lot of So let's look at our first problem and see how this is set up. We have people who are working at a place, whatever this is called. We don't have to know how many people there are. We can say because we got 20% of them make 850 and 15% make $9 and 25% make 950 and 20% make $10 and 15% make 1250 and 5% make $15, we can calculate the weighted average or the expected value of the wages in this place where people are working. So we would just take our 850 and multiply it times <coughs> 0. And then we would add that to our $9 and multiply it times 0.15. And then we'd add that to our, is it 950 next? 950 next times 0.25. And then we keep going. What's next? $10? $10 times 0. What? 2 plus, I think the next one's 12.50. What do people, how many, what percent make 1250 times 0.15 plus, and then I think the last person, last group of people makes $15, and there are 5% of them, so that's 0 0.05. When I put all this into my calculator, I get, and I can let you guys do it, but we'll save you time, $10.05. Now, notice this is not just taking the numbers on top and averaging them. This is taking into account that there are more people down here than there are up here. So that's why we come out with not just a number in the middle, but a number that's toward that end because there are more people making the 859 and 950 than there are on this end making the 10, 1250, and $15. So there's 
determine that if they drill in his backyard, there's a 30% chance that they're going to strike oil. If they drill in his front yard, there's a 46% chance that they're going to strike oil. They also have figured out that if they strike oil in the front yard, uh, excuse me, the backyard, they'll get $66 million. If they don't, it will have cost them $10 million. That's what they'll lose. If they strike oil in the front yard, they'll get $54 million, or they'll lose $10 million if they don't. And we're supposed to figure out the expected value for the backyard, the expected value for the front yard, and then decide where should they drill. This is the decision theory question. Where do they drill? Well, they're going to drill where they're going to make more money. Yes. So let's figure out where they're going to make some, how much money we can expect them to make. Pick a yard front or back. All right, front yard. So we're going to do this in the front yard. Now, that first question that we did was in a table form where we had the value at the front top and we had the probability on the bottom. So we're going to do this here. Now, what can happen in my front yard? Or I think it's not my front yard, it's Billy Bob's. What can happen in Billy Bob's front yard? He can strike oil or not. What is the value of striking oil in Billy Bob's front yard? Fifty-four billion. Five, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. Notice there it said fifty-four billion. Here I actually need all the zeros to do my calculation. Because it's going to expect the stuff with all the zeros in my answer. What is going to be the value of not striking oil in Billy Bob's front yard? Negative, because they're going to have to pay it, right? They're going to lose $10 million. What's the probability of them striking oil in the front yard? 0.46? What's the probability of them not striking oil in the front yard? 0.54, it's the 1 minus 0.46, which is going to be 0.54. Now, to figure out the expected value of striking oil, I'm going to take my 54 million and multiply it times 0.46, and then I'm going to add to that my negative 10 million and multiply it times 0.54 and get a value. I'm figuring out the expected value. In other words, what if I were to have this situation happen hundreds of thousands of times where I drilled every time, what is the av on average, what would I make out of this? What that's what the expected value is. So think of this as this is for number one. This is for no, they're making me do the front row. So it's for number two. So it's the expected value of drilling in the front row. Okay? This is like doing computer simulations. So let me do this. 